Thank you for attending the session. My name is Dennis Torres. I'll be talking about Delta Lake optimization maintenance in Microsoft Fabric. The idea is to understand what kind of maintenance we need to provide to our data stored in one lake and why do we need to provide this kind of maintenance for this data. So, this is me. Uh, I'm a, a data platform MVP. I was from 2020 to 2023. I work for Onyx Data. I'm a trainer, leader of the Malta Data Platform User Group. And here are some contacts. I'm being very active in publishing a lot. Uh, you find especially on my LinkedIn and YouTube channel. But from there, you jump to other points of contact as well. Okay, so the agenda today. Let's talk about one lake very quickly. View order and small files, updates in Delta tables, maintenance in one lake house, and maintenance in all lake houses. So, one lake, one or what? The basic information I'm reviewing on this slide is that all our data is in one single place and one single format. All our data is stored in one lake. That's what we hear a lot. Is this absolutely true? Not exactly. Not exactly. Uh, Take a look. The warehouse. The warehouse has an internal, uh, an internal, internal features which manage the data, and the data is synchronized with the one lake. Custo DB. When you provision Custo DB, you choose if you want to synchronize to one lake or not. The data setters are not synchronized to the one lake by default. You need to synchronize to one lake. There was a recent article from Data Mozart about how to do this sync, and I, I added some details about architecture, best practice, and so on in an article by me. Uh, and we end up with the lake house. The lake house is the one object which keeps it stored directly on one lake. There is no middle, uh, middle mechanism, there is no middle engine managing the data. The lake house keeps it stored directly in one lake. So the maintenance that we'll talk today, the warehouse, CustodB, they take care of their own maintenance. Usually we don't, uh, you don't, touch this point. They do this automatically. But the lake house does that. The lake house is the one for which we need to do this maintenance and we will, we will understand why this maintenance is needed. And we, this will also help to understand how important it is the automatic maintenance done by the other tools. On the, on the data stored on the one lake. So, first let's talk about viorder and small files. These are two subjects. Yeah, these are two subjects, but I join them together because these are two points of possible problems which are solved with one single maintenance statement. So, what's viorder? We know that a lake house has the tables area and the files area. And on the tables area, we know that only delta tables are recognized. Tables are, are, are only delta tables. The files accept anything. But only delta tables are recognized on the tables area. But it's more than that. It was always more than that. 
the fabric brought special optimizations for the tables contained in a warehouse. In a, not a warehouse, lake house, any object, but the lake house, we have some manual maintenance to do in relation to this. What this optimization is called? It's called the order. Uh, it applies a special sort in row distribution, dictionary encoding, compression of the parquet files. So it has a 15% impact on write times, but makes a 50% impact on compression. So the reads will be faster with the V order enabled. So the tables in our lake house and the tables that we keep in Microsoft Fabric, they are not the same as the, the Delta tables that you keep in, in an Azure Blob Storage. They have an, an additional, an additional optimization. They are still compatible between tools. Other tools can read them. Uh, they can read tables from other tools, but the tables created in Fabric have this additional optimization. The other configuration. If you look at the details on PySpark, the, the other the other configuration is a bit complex. Each write operation which we do in a single table can have the V order enable or disable. We can be using this optimization or not for each write operation. But there is a session configuration which defines the V order usage. If the V order will be enabled or disabled at session level. There is also a table configuration that defines the V order usage. But if we apply this configuration on the table level, at the moment it is applied, it will only be valid for future data that gets into the table, not for the data which is already there. So this is not very uh, usual to use this table configuration. So right configuration defines the order use like I mentioned in the first scenario. And we have an optimize command. The command is called optimize, which fix the V order. So if we find a table in our lake house, which is not using this optimization called V order, uh, we can use this command optimize to fix the V order. Okay. Okay, but uh, all this is too complex. Isn't there one way to simplify this thing? Yes. Let's see why is this important, why you should care and why you should not care. Why you shouldn't care, why you could ignore most of this. Because the order is the full in most of the fabric environment. If you use a pipeline, if you use a data flow gen 2, if you use a notebook, whatever you use to put your table inside the lake house, the V order is the full. The V order will be applied unless a crazy developer disables it in pipe purpose. That's, that's a possibility, but it's not a usual possibility that you would be expecting. But I'm saying most of fabric environment, not all the fabric environment. So we come to why you should care. Some tools, such as the One Lake Explorer, allow you to get, um, let's call, an alien table and just put it inside the lake house. You could copy a delta table, the set of files of a delta table from an Azure Blob storage to inside the lake house without passing through the regular writing operations. What would happen? This table would have the same optimizations it had on the regular 
Azure Blob Storage. So probably it will not be the automized. The one like Explorer allows there for the hand that a new table will appear inside your lake house. So this is a special situation which can make a table appear in the middle of the lake house without the order enabled. Another possibility are shortcuts because your shortcuts may be pointing to storage outside the fabric environment. So fabric has no control about how the writing operations happening on those storage. So the tables to which these shortcuts are pointing may not be using the order. We could optimize them for the order and still keep them compatible with their original environment. That's another possibility. So we have a big reason to not care, but we have some special situations when we should care about the view order. So this simplifies simplifies the problem. On most scenarios, we don't care. It's there by the fool. On some specific scenarios, we need to get back and take a look on it. Now that I mentioned the viewer, then let's talk about the small files problem. What is the small files problem? The small files problem is when a table is broken down in very small files, lots of small files. This creates problem to the reading task. It, of course, it's more difficult to read a lot of small files than to read a one big file. So this is a known problem uh, in relation to delta tables and parquet tables. Too many small files cause problems on reading. So Fabric sets the default to store the files as one gigabyte. So Fabric will try to store each file using one gigabyte of space. We put in the files with the size of one gigabyte. Is this possible? Of course, not always. It completely depends on your flow of information inside Fabric. If you give Fabric a huge flow of information of many gigabytes, Fabric will break down that flow of information in files of one gigabyte each. But if, if you keep giving Fabric small flows of data, then Fabric will be required to create small files according to the flow of data which is arriving on the risk to create a small files problem. At least the default configuration is trying to avoid the problem. It doesn't mean that it will be always successful. So it completely depends on the flow of data. And this small files problem bring to our minds uh, an analysis about how will we ingest the data. Because we need to have this in mind, the consequence of the flow of our ingestion in the files, the storage of our tables. Optimize, yes, the same optimize which fix the order, fix the small files problem. It is absolutely the same statement, the same optimize. So let's see an example. The order and the small files problem. Uh, here I have the portal. I loaded some notebooks here on the portal, and I'll be using this lake house, which is the sales lake house. Let me ensure that my zoom tool is enabled. Okay, so I can zoom here. Uh, I will start focusing on fact sale and also dimension stock item, two tables that which I use a lot. Uh, here on the lake house, I can use the view files and take a look on the files this table has. 
dimension stock item, for example, has only one file. Oh, but this file has not one gigabyte. Of course, there is not one gigabyte of information to put on the file. So the file is way smaller than one gigabyte. It depends on the flow of information which comes to fabric. Okay. Now let me open the first demonstration. Demo A notebook. On this first code block on the notebook, I'm listing the properties of the tables. And on the properties of the tables, we have a metadata which points if the table is reorder optimized or not. Take a look how the, this piece of code works. I have here a function called show metadata. And then I use OS list D and I get the tables from the default lake house linked to the notebook. We say that the default lake house linked to the notebook is mounted. So we can access this default lake house using a simple path. I can access the tables area and the files area, and I'm listing the content of the tables area. In this way, I'm listing out the tables in the default lake house. So I get the tables list and make a four on the tables list and make a call to show metadata for each one of the tables, passing the full path of the table and the name of the table itself. So inside the show metadata, I have some prints to keep the information organized. Then I read a data set from this path, get a schema of the data set and the metadata of this schema. Then I need to work over this metadata. Uh, this goes to the schema properties variable. If the schema properties variable has some content, because it could, uh, could not have, but usually has, if it has some contents, I make a four on the properties and I list all the properties one by one, decoding the key and the value of the properties from the UTF-8 format. So this piece of code is allowing us to list if our tables in the lake house, they are viewer optimized or if they are not viewer optimized. So let me execute. So we note the tables and the properties, which is important for us at the moment, is the viewer enable property on the tables. In fact, this PySpark code could be improved to read only this property and immediately tell if the table is viewer optimized or not. We could make this improvement on this Spark code. So here, we can see if the table is viewer optimized or if the table is not viewer optimized. And the tables are viewer optimized, are all viewer optimized. Okay, so let's make an example of an exception. It's not the usual exception. I said the usual exceptions would be tables copied with the files copied to one Lake Explorer or shortcuts to external places. These would be the most usual cases, but let me drop 
one of the tables, I'm dropping the dimension stock. I'm so confident on dropping the dimension stock because I have the dimension stock on the files area. So I can just import the data again. And that's what I do. I will import the data from the dimension stock again. But while importing the data from the dimension stock, I will disable the viewer property and I also set the bin size to 10K. Setting the bin size to 10K will create the small files problem. I'm creating a problem to solve it later. This code is a bit exaggerated. I have a function here. The function generically loads the table from the files area to the tables area, receives the table name, looks for this table in the files area, and loads the table to the tables area. Then outside the function, I have an array, but with only one item. And then I make a for each, calling the function to lower this table, lower the dimension stock item. Let's execute. First, before executing, let me make a refresh here on the table and see that dimension stock was dropped. Did I refresh correctly? Tables, refresh. Dimension stock was dropped. The page with the notebook is insisting to show it, but it doesn't exist anymore. Okay. Uh, then I will execute this code to load the dimension stock again. It's executing, but with the bad configuration set. Okay, executed. The dimension stock is back to the lake house. If I make a refresh here. Dimension stock is back. Now I will use show metadata again. My one is small detail for who is new with Spy Spark. We are in a notebook and we are in the same session. During the same session, what I defined is still valid. So the show metadata is valid because I defined it on the first code block. It's valid from the first code block. And the variable table will contain the less value given to this variable. The less value was defined on the four, which is dimension stock. So just calling show metadata, passing the table variable, will show me the metadata for the dimension stock table. And we see the dimension stock table now doesn't have the viewer attribute, the viewer metadata, I mean. So uh, the dimension stock is not not view the optimizer, so readings on the dimension stock will be slightly slower. It, it always depends on the size of your table, of course. And more than that, let's take a look on view files of the dimension stock. I don't have one single file anymore. Now I have three files. Now I have three files on the dimension stock and not one. So Dimension stock starts to suffer from the small files problem we mentioned before. Let me fix the configurations, enable the order again on session level, and return the bin size to, to one giga. That's done. The configuration is set, and now I ask to optimize the dimension stock.
optimize the dimension stock table. You can see the statement. It's done. It executed the optimization. I one more time show the metadata for the dimension stock table. The table is dimension stock. Um, sometimes Fabric creates this glitch. What the gl glitch is that I ask the dimension stock to be optimized with the order. Yeah, I, I swear it was optimized with the order, but sometimes it means to put the v order proper here, so we don't have the proper telling us that it was optimized. Let me make a try with a refresh to be sure that it's not a cache, it's really a glitch from, from Fabric and not a catch. I got this glitch before, but I tested this yesterday, yesterday again, and the day before as well, and uh, the glitch was not present. Let me show metadata for the dimension stock. No, it's still with this glitch. So sometimes it disappears with the view order and makes things a bit confused. In some days, some update on Fabric will bring the view order again. Not a problem. But I swear it's view order optimized, but more than that, we have the small files problem that we were concerned about. Uh, to check the files after a change, I need always to refresh the page. Always to refresh this page. Okay, so you get the dimension stock. Uh, view files. Many of you say it got worse. It works than before. Now I have four files instead of having three files. Not exactly. We need to pay a lot of attention to what is happening. The most recent file is this one. And this most recent file is bigger than all the other ones. What the optimize did, the optimize joined all the small files in a single file containing all the data. This single file contains all the data of this table. The other files are what we call unlinked files. A select operation on the table, for example, will only read this most recent file and ignore the other ones. How can I prove that, what I'm saying? We can check the delta log. That's what the delta table is, the delta log is done for. On the delta log, if I check the operations on the delta log, we see that the most recent operations removed three files, the three small files, and included a new one. So the optimizer really joined the small files in a single bigger one. What the optimizer didn't execute was to remove the old files, remove the unlinked files. This the optimizer doesn't do. But that's our next subject. That's the next thing we'll talk about. Let's go ahead and talk about this. So uh, let's get back to updates in Delta tables. 
the point is data, data lake, data warehouse, all that we are building in Fabric are intended to be historical repositories. So from a theoretical point of view, they are expected to be read only. I mean, we ingest data, we insert but we should not be updating data. It's not expected to update data because update historical data means to be changing the fact. So it's not something totally expected from the theoretical point of view. But the reality is that usually we choose what kind of history we will keep and what kind of history we will overhide. If some dimensions are not so important, then we just make an upset on those dimensions. This means that if the record already existed and was changed, we'll update the record. But in some dimensions which are more important, we decide to make a slowly changing dimension type two. This means that you keep the record of all the changes that happen with that information. So these processing techniques results in, have many results related to updates and deletes, and these updates and deletes affect the storage in a way that we may not be expecting. Most of us may be used to database, so we're not expecting this kind of results from updates and insects that we do. And the main point that we need to be aware of is that parquet files are really only, and this is the truth. Parquet files can't be updated. So how do we update a table? How do we execute an update and it works? Because the delta format, the delta format introduced the log, which makes a workaround and allow a, 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 a table, which would be a parquet table, to behave like a regular database table. That's what we call delta table. It's in fact a workaround on the fact that the parquet tables are absolutely read-only. The parquet tables are absolutely read-only. So let's see the consequence of this, the consequence of all this that I mentioned. Uh, and while, while making this second demonstration, you will discover what we should do with the dimension stock as well. Um, you will see during the demonstration one command that we should have applied to the dimension stock as well. First, let's take a look on the fact sale. Fact sale is a partition table broken down in year and quarters and each quarter has a single file. Each quarter has a single file. Okay. Let me close this demo A, and now I open the demo B. Let me make a select on the fact sale, getting one of the records present in the fact sale table, just to prove that this record is there, this record is present on the fact sale table. So it's executing, coming, and that's it. This is the record which is present on the fact sale table. And the most important information is that this record is the fourth quarter. So we're focusing on the fourth quarter of this table. Let's see what happens if I make an update on a single record, one update 
on a single record which belongs to the fourth quarter of this table. That's what I'm doing. One single update to a record on the fourth quarter of this table. executing, finding the record, and that's it. The record is updated. Now I will execute this query to prove that I still have only one single record. But while it executes, I go to the other tab and I refresh the tab, the entire page. Uh, if I don't refresh the page, I will not have an updated view of the files of the, this table. So I need to make a refresh of the page. And the select of the single record is here already a period. So I continue having one single record. But if I go to the fact sales, view files, and on the fact sale, I go to the fourth quarter, now I have two files. I have two files on the fourth quarter. Why do I have two files? Because the rule, the basic rule, that parquet files are immutable. Parquet files are immutable. So to make an update on a single record, the lake house was required to completely duplicate the parquet file and while duplicating the parquet file, make the update on the information. You see, these files have the same size. The simple update doesn't change the size of the files. Uh, let me give you something to think. Imagine what would happen and what would be the impact if the files really had one gigabyte. And if we, you were sent simple single record updates to your lake house, imagine the impact that these would have. So it's important to understand these maintenance details and these storage details to understand the impact of what we will do during the ingesting of the information. Okay. Now I'll take one step further, and still, instead of update one single record, I'll update all the records. All the records. Taking some moments. It doesn't take much if you consider that this table has 50 million of records. So it's not that much. But it's updating everything. This file, the, the old file that we saw that was copied for the update became what we call unlinked file. This old file could be used for time travel in Delta table. There is this feature, time travel in Delta table. Uh, this feature exists. And just to raise your curiosity, 
date warehouses, date warehouse in Feb, que are implementing the time travel on delta tables by using the cloning feature. The cloning feature is evolving on data warehouse and implementing time travel on delta tables. But we don't rely, usually, it's not, we don't rely on time travel. We don't depend on time travel. So the update is completed. Once the update is completed, I can refresh all my data. Refresh the page, I mean. Uh, okay. So the page is being refreshed. Let's take a look on the fact sales files. Year 2000. Now every quarter have two files because everything was updated except the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter now has three files because I had done an update before, then I updated again. Then the fourth quarter has three files. And all the old files are what we call unlinked files. They are unlinked files. So how do we solve this? We have a statement to solve this, which is called vacuum. We can just execute vacuum over the table, and it will delete all the unlinked files. But the vacuum has a rule, a rule to never delete files which are uh, more recent than 168 hours. So the retention period is by the full 168 hours or more. You can put more, but you can put less than 168 hours. One of the main reasons is that if by accident, the vacuum is executing at the same time that some kind of ingestion or maintenance on the table is happening, this can have terrible effects. So if you take the risk to execute the vacuum with less than 168 hours, like I'm taking the risk at the moment, you need to ensure that you not execute vacuum at the same time of other executions or other ingestions. And to execute vacuum with less than 168, you need to enable this retention duration check. Enable, sorry, the opposite. You need to disable the retention duration check. Only after disabling, disabling the retention duration check, you can execute a vacuum with zero hours, for example. So I will execute this, setting the property. Then I will execute the vacuum on the fact say. Done, so I can make a refresh on the page, on the other page, to see the fact sale files. So let's take a look on the fact sale files. And now I have again one file per quarter. Even the fourth quarter has only one file. Vacuum dropped out the unlinked files all the files which, according to the Delta log, were being removed by previous transactions. So they were removed by the vacuum statement. So we are seeing that two common maintenance that we need to apply to the lake house are optimize and vacuum. These are common maintenance we need to apply to the lake house. Let's see another example. Now I will execute an insert, and this insert is being executed on the fourth quarter, on the fourth quarter of the table. So I'm executing the insert. I hope it's not a too much problem to pass some few minutes. I'm almost there, almost closing. So refresh the page. 
Let's view the files of fact sales. And what happened now with the fourth quarter? I have two files again. I have two files again because I did an insert. However, this time that I have two files again, uh, we can see the difference of the time, but now they don't have the same size. One file has 10K, the other is, has 39 megabytes. The 10K file was a file that the Lake House had to create to hold my insert. To hold my insert, the lake house was obliged to create a new file. It's not possible to insert an existing file. Parquet files are read only. So it had to create a new file. And because this kind of flow, inserting file, inserting record by record, we are start suffering from the small files problem. What happens if I run vacuum in this situation? If I try to run vacuum in a situation like this? So I executed vacuum. Let's make a refresh on the page. View the files. Year 2000, fourth quarter, and nothing happened. Why nothing happened? Because this time we are not talking about an, an unlinked file. This time we are talking about a file which contains a valid record. This 10K file contains a valid record. So removing this file is not a task for vacuum. Vacuum will do nothing on this case. Uh, this would be an example that I have only one record of this guy, but since I'm already late, I'll jump directly to the optimize. If the task of the optimize to join small files in a single bigger files, this is the first task we need to execute. Join the small files in a single bigger file. So it's executing the optimize. That's it. That's it. Now I can make a refresh. View files on fact sales. Year, quarter. Oh, but now I have three files. Yes, of course I have three files. But if you take a look on the most recent file, it has 39 megabytes. Of course, because 39 megabytes plus 10K is still 39 megabytes. So it appears as 39 megabytes. But the two old files are unlinked now. And the optimize doesn't drop a linked files. So we first execute optimize, then we follow the execution with a vacuum execution to remove the linked files. That's it. I refresh. Okay, so view files, year 2000, fourth quarter, and there it is, one single file. So the conclusion that we take from these examples is that we need a frequent optimization, run a frequent maintenance task, running optimize and vacuum on our lake houses. Uh, too close in a better way, but I will not be able, with the, this timing, I will not be able to make a detailed explanation. What this code is doing? 
The school is listing all the tables on the lake house, calling a function clean tables, and the function clean tables execute optimize and vacuum table by table. In summary, I have a block of PySpark script which can optimize a, a, a single lake house at once. That's it. So it's executing and it will tell me the optimization that it will do on table by table. While it's doing this, Mind that this kind of script, a script to, to, to optimize an entire lake house, we can shadow. And we can shadow this directly on the, on the notebook. We don't need even need a pipeline for that. I can just enable the shadow on the notebook and specify the frequency which I would like this to run. For example, every Sunday, specify the time, start and delay, and then time of this shadow, and so on. So I can shadow a notebook like this to control the maintenance of a single lake house. Uh, and that's it. I'm already seeing the name of the tables appearing here. They will continue appearing one by one, one by one, showing the optimization happens. But this script, this script C, uh, it only makes the optimization for a single lake house. What if I want to make the optimization for multiple lake house? The point is that uh, notebooks can't, in a natural way, access multiple lake house. Many people will complain and say, no, they can. They can, but it's not natural. It's not their natural purpose. The object which can naturally access multiple lake house is not a notebook. It's a Spark job definition maintenance job, but the Spark job definition is completely different than the other objects. It's absolutely different than the other objects. I need to upload the file for maintenance. Uh, then I can add the lake house, which will receive maintenance, many lake house. I choose the lake house to which I will give maintenance and they can be in different workspaces, it doesn't mind. One of the lake houses set as the full and the other lake house, they are accessible on the code as Spark configurations. So the code is capable to loop through Spark configuration and mount the lake house. <coughs> yes, it's needed to mount, manually mount the lake house. It's needed to man, manually mount the lake house one by one for this to work. Uh, so we don't have time to go into all the details related to Spark jobs, but I can say that I have an article here explaining this step by step how to make maintenance of multiple lake house at the same time using Spark job. And you can think ahead and think that this is not only for maintenance and task that you would like to be repeatedly executed in multiple lake house, you can use a Spark job. A Spark job is better than a notebook to manage multiple lake house. So, I'm beyond my time already, so let's leave my contact. 
and open for questions. Thank you very much for attending. I hope you like it. I hope you, you see these as interesting points. And any questions you would like to ask? Thank you.